We have to know. It's time for your little secret on Cal Cagno Radio. What you're about to hear comes to us from our website, calcagnoradio.com. This is today's dirty little secret. I called the cops on the party that I wasn't invited to. <laughs> <laughs> That's awesome. Talk about sour grapes. <laughs> I don't know why I find this one funny, too. I think it's hysterical. Wasn't invited, picked up the phone, and was like, uh, there's underage drinking or maybe too much loud noises. Because we don't know how old this person was. Now, I have kind of a dirty little secret that I have to confess. <laughs> this may have happened, and you may have been indirectly linked to something like this. Uh, me and you were in high school. We went to a party. It was you, me, and a couple of our friends. I'm trying to think if I remember this. And we went to a, a, a house party oh. that a dude was throwing, and he wasn't the nicest guy. He'd kind of been kicked out of both of our high schools. Yes. Kind of a tough guy. And for, We were friends with his girlfriend? Girlfriend, yeah. Like, his girlfriend and her sister were friends with the guys that we were going to the party with. That's what it was, yeah. And so we showed up at the party, and we were in the party for all of two minutes, <laughs> and <laughs> this drunken, tough guy comes out and points at all four of us that walked in. I forgot about You, 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 and you leave. Yes. And it was like, all of a sudden, everyone's looking at us. I think someone was holding a chain. <laughs> Someone was like hitting a baseball bat against their hand. Yes. So, no, you know, without even having to to say, we boogied out of there. Yeah, we didn't we didn't put up a fight. No, we did not put up a fight. We didn't mostly stick because around. at that time we were not doing the math correctly, and we kind of Joe and I have talked about this before, both on the podcast and off of it. It's just a matter of size sometimes, but we were way bigger than this guy. Way bigger. But in your head, you're like, he's a known badass, so he probably could kick my ass. But it's not necessarily true. I did fight him in fourth grade and whooped him. Good, I, good. I, okay. I, I, I whooped him in fourth grade okay. so anyway, so at the bike rack. He goes, you, 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 and you. Well, no, remember, there were four of us. That's right. He said, you, you, and you. I, I screwed it up first. He said, you, you, and you, out. So we left. Left. Our fourth... <laughs> <laughs> was still in there. Yeah, I, I don't know if I can say names. No, well, you can say he listens. So Neil, yeah, Neil was our fourth, and he was in there. So we come around the front of the house, and Neil, I don't know if he was thrown. He looked like when Jazz gets uh, <laughs> thrown out of the house on Fresh Prince. Yeah, tossed out of the house. Yeah, tossed out, lands on his feet <laughs> like a cat, <laughs> and all of a sudden, the four of us are walking back to the car that's parked down the street. Well, I don't know if you guys know this. I don't. I, I'm. I'm sure I've mentioned to it, to you know, mentioned it to you guys over the last, you know, twenty years or so. But one thing that we did that night is, as we got in the car and we were driving away, you know, kind of like, oh my gosh, I can't believe that that just happened. Blah blah blah. I asked for you guys to stop and let me out of the car because I had to call my mom. Now back then we didn't have cell phones. There was a oh, payphone. Oh, I didn't even think about it. There's okay. a payphone at the corner of that street. The payphone was only taken out a few years ago. I I went and I made a nine one one call. You did. I did not call my mom. I made a nine one one call, called the police department, <laughs> and said that there was a party with underage drinking oh. and kids were smoking the marijuana. Nice, dude. Yep. Got back in the I car. I did not know this. Any got of this. back in the car because I didn't want to get out, so I couldn't have told you guys. Cause, no, no. Because when you do a heist, when you do anything, <laughs> one person talks. It's always me. And <laughs> I'm not trustworthy at all. So I Can you told, keep a secret? No, I, I told can't. no one for like a decade. And I got back in the car, and you know we were like, "Well, where do we want to go now?" We were yeah, like, I, I don't remember. know. We National Coney Island. I was gonna say we probably went there. Yeah. And so our OPD, as we're going to. To National Coney Island, the police are going, you know, northbound, <laughs> headed to the headed to the party. I didn't know any of this, but good for you. So when I hear this dirty little secret, it brings back all those memories. So that, that's a good one. It's funny, yeah, because we got bounced from that party pretty quickly, and we didn't, like I said, put up any fight. I actually saw that guy probably three years later and got to know him and was actually a pretty decent guy. And I told him that story. He didn't remember any of that. Like he was Yeah, like, he he wasn't in the right frame of mind to remember any of that. <laughs> yeah. He didn't really remember any of that happening. Yeah. But I remember when this girl who, you know, she went to Central, I she was like, Oh, this is my boyfriend 
fill in the blank. And I was like, oh, crap. He's going to remember me from this party where he threw you me You just up. get socked. Yeah. He's like, hey, remember I told you to leave the party? Also, furthermore, kicks me in the nuts. Get out of this college. <laughs> oh You're like, I don't, <laughs> I don't I think the same rules apply there, <laughs> Brian. Uh, hey, I don't think you're allowed to do that. Are you the deed? Are you the dean of students? I don't know. Can you kick me? He's can like, I'm kick- the dean of discipline. Yeah. Now. <laughs> can you kick me out of college? Wait. Because I have a test due. <laughs> I'm not sure I you have can, a pop quiz. I'm not sure you could do that. What do you give this one on a scale of one to 10? Just because it takes me back to oh, my childhood. Oh, that's awesome. That's a good story. I'm doing 10. Yeah, I think this is a big story too, or I mean a big one too, big dirty little secret. I give it a 10 as well. I wonder about like what you said was going on because I think there's a there's the idea of what you're saying, which is like, hey, underage drinking. But what do you say if it's adults having parties that you weren't invited to? That what? A noise ordinance? They're just too loud? Yeah, yeah, they're they're too loud or there's a huge fight going on. Oh, okay. Um, I heard someone yell, he's got a gun. Right, whatever you need to do to get the police to show <laughs> right. up. I felt right. bad. We didn't do it, but um, we've had a couple of neighbors get the cops called on them. I swear to you, I didn't do it. Now, I did call the cops on my neighbors when we first moved in here. It was like a Tuesday night, and the Red Wings were like in the playoffs, and it was like 2 o'clock in the morning, and these people across the street were like playing like – Street hockey and screaming and carrying on. So like a grown man, I, hello, police department, <laughs> could you come over? You're not going to say it's me, right? They showed up ever. We never had a problem ever again. Yeah. But, they show up and they're like, hey, we got a call. Oh, from that guy over there. You're peeking out the window. <laughs> that guy right there. The blinds go, whack. It's just a snapshot. <laughs> Oosh, 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 oosh. Get out, get out, get out. Get everybody, shut up, shut up, shut up. Turn off the light. The light goes out. They look no. over, they see the, the blind snap close, and then they see the light go out. <laughs> Your car start. <laughs> <pull out the laughs> <driveway. laughs> Three o'clock in the morning. Uh, but yeah, we have neighbors of mine that I told you are Romanian, and so they like to play techno music till three o'clock in the morning sometimes and dance in their backyard, which is a whole different discussion for a different time. They've gotten the cops called on them, on them a couple times. That wasn't us. I really didn't do it. But the best story about getting the cops called was someone had a graduation party maybe three or four houses down on like a Saturday night at like, I don't know, five, and you hear click, click. Click, click. They had a live, live band. band. That lasted five minutes before the cops were here. Well, why couldn't they do that? They, it was against the rules, dude. I don't know what it was. Man. But yeah, they shut that thing down. This they, community doesn't fool around. I know. They must have had 150 people in their backyard for like a high school graduation. Wow. And like I said, all it took was, come on, baby, don't fear the reaper. Come on, baby. <laughs> that was it. All it took was don't fear the reaper. And before you, <laughs> all the leaves are brown. Okay. <laughs> <laughs> Maybe if they played better music. But it was like, click, 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 click. I don't know what song I'm singing. Now, I went from singing Don't Fear the Reaper. You sang All the Leaves are Brown. And I think I'm singing uh, Hazy Shade of Winter by the Bengals. Or is that the Go-Go's? I thought you were singing. <laughs> what is that? Say it's your birthday. <laughs> by the, My birthday too. <laughs> by the Beatles. Right. You say it's your birthday. All I can think of like, is it like, what was it before it was like Chuck E. Cheese and Little Caesars? Major Magic. Major Magic. All I can think of is those, <laughs> say it's your birthday. And like their eyes are like clickety clacking and like they're like moving like horrible animatronics. Yeah, there was a fox I just remember who I thought was kind of sexy in a weird way. <laughs> she had a gray body. <laughs> She, she looked foxy. like a, she, she, had a, she was foxy. Yeah, she had a, she looked like a Lamborghini with like six hundred thousand miles on it. You know what I mean? Lost a bit off its curveball, but still looks good. Take it for a test drive. I'm like, Ooh, foxy, foxy, foxy. And, and from Major Magics, <laughs> unbelievable. Yeah, that poor band too. I think about the band. They probably thought this was their big break, right? They're like, oh, dude, we got a gig on Friday night or Saturday night. We're going to be playing someone's high school graduation. There's going to be like 150 people there. I heard yeah. there's going to be a record executive there. Right. Our writer says we get paid regardless. Yeah. Click. Click. They say it's your birth. They say it's your graduation. You know they just and then, and then the plug gets pulled. It's my graduation. <laughs> and then they all look at each other like, "What is there anything?" And then the cop's standing over there with the plug, <laughs> shaking his head, shaking his head, You're waving done. his finger. It's over. And then the lead singer just goes from looking at the cop to looking at the mother of the grad student, and it's like, "We still get paid." <laughs> <laughs> 
Because we still showed up. Hey, we played one note. That's all it takes. You this didn't get the permit. A- <laughs> we showed up. We held up our end of the bargain. I just imagine that this band was going to change all of the words to all of the songs yeah. to be like graduation. Yeah. Yeah. Like when you see those Christian bands. I went to a wedding one time that the Christian band changed all the lyrics of the song to be Christian. So like, so take them old Bibles off your shelf. Not joking. Seriously. You. I'm not joking. I think I'll read them here by myself. <laughs> exactly. When, and there was no dancing at this wedding. It was like a wedding. My cousin is like Pentecostal or something. And so they had a band and they had a dance floor. But anytime someone would go on the dance floor, they like shoot them off. Uh, so it would be like, Christians. Just take them old Bibles off the shelf. As Christians, we really know how to ruin a good party, <laughs> don't we? <laughs> Yeah, the one I heard. Hey, later. we're not going to have dancing or drinking. Yeah, but hey, everybody have fun celebrating. And it's at uh, three Roger p.m. Carries, you know. <laughs> it's like, are you kidding me? Yeah, this is it. And I by need the- a drink to get through this. <laughs> <laughs> Jesus drank wine. I'm just saying. I'm just saying. Water to wine is a thing. I'm just saying. The first miracle he he, he performed was <laughs> at a wedding. I'm serious, guys. I can't stress this enough. It's totally cool. I will even drink barefoot wine right now. I will take Suter home. I will, I will take Ernest and Julio Gallo. <laughs> At this point, I will take anything. Just please, something to take something. the edge off. I will take prison hooch. <laughs> if someone just had grape jelly. I will take something that they make on moonshiners <laughs> from the backwoods of Alabama. If you would just please help me get through this. I need something. Okay, have you ever been to a daytime wedding? Is that worse? Yeah. I'm... I, I feel like the non-drinking weddings are just horrible. I'm sorry. They are. They're terrible. And I grew up, I didn't have my first drink until I was 30. Yeah. So I grew up like every wedding I went to. You were sober. I was sober and there was, so there was no drinking and I would probably say half of them were no dancing. Yeah. So it's just like. So you've been to those types of weddings. Yeah. So it's just like, and and I didn't know any better. So you just went, you were like, okay, well, this kind of sucks. And then- now that I've enjoyed a drink, now you and you go to weddings. Now you're like wedding crashers. Yeah, and now I'm just like, dude, you like there, there's got to be. I, I went to a wedding. My girlfriend Molly, her cousin, got married this past summer, and we went to the wedding, and it was the greatest yeah. wedding I've ever been to. I mean, like the like weddings that I was used to. If they didn't have drinking, but they did have dancing. No one would dance no. because no one's had like a little liquid courage. Right, exactly. So this one was off the hook and like her whole family's like <laughs> buying each other drinks. Everyone's hey, out there just no, dancing. Hey, they're not buying anything. They're having each other drinks. Exactly. Yeah. And then and then like everyone's just out there and like booty bumping yeah, and grinding fun. up on each other and just having a great time. Yeah. And it was so much fun. And then, you know, it's like, hey, this kid that you grew up, you know, with at church and <laughs> You know, he's getting married and, and it's the wedding's going to be here and you're just thinking like, I don't want to go. No, exactly. I, I went to a wedding one time that was at two o'clock in the afternoon on like a Saturday. It was from like two to four. No drinking, no dancing, two to four. And you still got to give a gift. You still got to pretend like you're having fun. At no, that, at they that had point, dancing. No, they did have dancing. At and that point, you cut your losses and you say, you know what? I'll send a gift. Yep. There's your China uh, <laughs> uh, gravy boat. I'm not coming. <laughs> By the way, do you know what segment this is? What? Dirty, dirty Little, little secret. secret. If you got Dirty Little Secret, tell us about it. Go to calcagnoradio.com right now and submit your Dirty Little Secret for Calcagno Radio. You're stealing, right to jail. You're playing music too loud, right to jail, right away. You're driving too fast, jail. Slow, jail. You're charging too high prices for uh, sweaters, glasses. You right to jail. You undercook fish, believe it or not, jail. You overcook chicken, also jail. Undercook, overcook. You make an appointment with a dentist and you don't show up, believe it or not, jail, right away. We have the best patients in the world because of jail. As you know, I've been off work for a long time. What? Yeah, I've had a few part-time jobs here and there, but I'm what they call underemployed. Either way, hopefully that'll change very, very soon. Very Anyways. Soon. Um, I have a good feeling. Yeah, I have a good feeling, too. Uh, so I have a feeling. I have watched a few hours of Netflix in my days off. Okay. And 
the other day it happened to me again where I was watching episodes of Family Guy that I've seen a thousand times, but I'm watching them on Netflix again. And it says, are you still watching these? And you have to like click yes or no. Do you ever have that happen? Oh, absolutely, yeah. And then the guilt got to me that it's like, well, how long is it set to that it's asking me if I'm still there? Like it assumes that I left the TV running and went somewhere. Right. So it's asking me like, hey, do you still want to be watching these? You're not really sitting there still. And then the guilt hit me where I was like, I better go walk around the block or something. (laughs) How long will you watch Netflix, Hulu, whatever, before you start to feel pathetic? Um... I don't. I don't feel pathetic. Um, I think they have those on infinity for, for people who fall asleep, because like if you're binge watching a show and like let's say you you doze off, and then you're like and it just kept playing, I, like that used to happen back in the day. Like oh, you think like you're watching Stranger Things and you're only on episode two, and then you wake up, and you're like oh crap, I've watched ep- I'm through episode I'm through, six. I, I'm through season two. Yeah, but can't you just go back to where you were? Yeah, but it'll show like that you watched all of them. So you're like, what one did I leave off? Oh, by? right, right, right. Where you think it's I? for people sleeping? I I do. Um, if when it comes to like, if I'm watching it, like a show that I've been watching a lot lately, and the reason I don't feel bad to answer your question of how long to sit there and watch it is because my days off are on Wednesdays and Thursdays. My kids are at school. I could be you know cleaning the house, doing the kitchen, all that stuff while the TV is on. Or if it's like right now where it's 10 below outside and a ton of snow, I can't do anything outside anyway. So sue me. I'm going to sit inside and watch eight hours on my day off because I can. Well, and it's different because you haven't had to look for a job. Like that's the thing, you know, and plus my wife wife works from home. So she's home 90%. So she's on top, like you're going to watch this all day? No. see, Like you're a teenager? No, 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 no. She doesn't do that. But you can tell, always judging, always watching, always looking, <laughs> right, always judging. Right. Yeah, it's not so uh, so obvious where it's like, hey, because I do a lot around here. Like, I really do. I clean, I cook, I you scrub. boxes but, around pipes. Yeah, I do. I do a lot of handiwork. So she's not really complaining about that. But it is funny how sometimes she'll be like, what you going to do today? You're like, whatever I dog on, <laughs> well, please. Is that, do you find that with your girlfriend? Does she ever ask you what you're going to do on your days off? All the time. All the time. And I'll tell, and the thing is, if I tell her the truth of what I'm going to do, I know how pathetic it sounds. It sounds coming out of my mouth. So she's like, oh, what are you going to do today? And I'm thinking like. See, but that's the woman, that's the woman's way of her. She has a few ideas of what you should be doing. Right. Just wait for her to tell you, even if you don't ask. Right. Yeah, no. So she'll be like, what are you going to do today? And then what's your answer? Uh, Well, I was going to play some video games (laughs) and I'll probably eat lunch somewhere in there. (laughs) Play some more video games and probably finish that off with a different video game. Now, do you think if she were off during the day? Because, again, you have weird off days. You don't have Saturday and Sunday. Which Does she work a normal job so she's off yeah, Saturday and Sundays? Correct. Um, if you worked a normal work schedule where you know, you're off Saturday and Sundays, she would have your whole day planned out for you. Like, you realize you got it kind of good right now. Yeah. No, but there's... Th- like, you'd be going to antique fairs, dude. See there, but here's the deal. I understand that I sometimes need a kick in the pants to do something, and so she is that in my life. Where that's what we I all could, hope for a, a <laughs> significant other who's the kick in the pants you need. Right, right. And so she may not be good looking, and I'm not really in love with her, but man, she could kick me in the ass when I need it. I'm 40 years old, <laughs> and I could very well die at age 60 and like look back on my life and be like, I didn't do anything. <laughs> But Molly is the one who's like, you know, hey, I'm taking today off work or whatever, or I'm doing this, or I have today off. Um, we're going to go to Canada. We're going to go hit some wineries. Oh, okay. And then I just do what she says. Right. Hey, I got tickets to the Red Wings game. We're going. Oh, okay. Yeah, because you're like me that way, that I am not the person. I don't plan a lot of things. Like, I really don't. And I know I get accused by my wife of, like, not being social. Like, she'll be like, I feel like we never do anything because you never want to do anything. It's like, no, it's not that I don't want to do anything. It's just, I pre- well, okay, yeah, I'd prefer to be home than to do anything. But if you said to me, like, hey, I went and got tickets to see the Red Wings, it's not like I'm like, no, I'm not going. Right. No, I'll go, but I'm not going to go... F- you know, scout out tickets. Although anymore, you know, trying to get free tickets when you're not exactly the morning guy on ADNX. It's funny right. how many people won't return your calls. Where yeah, I'm like, it's funny, huh? I used to be able to get whatever I want. Now it's like, hey, can I get four tickets? Like the other day, I w- wanted four tickets to the Pistons game, and I have friends that still work for the Pistons. 
I thought they were my friends. Right. Oh, no, they're gone, right? Well, they're there. They're just not. <laughs> I Okay, now you guys all know the Pistons, like the joke I saw today on Twitter was a, I had two Pistons tickets lying in my car. A guy broke into my car, and when I came back, there were six tickets there, meaning no one wants to go see the Pistons. Right. And I'm like, hey, could I get four tickets to the Pistons game? Yeah, let me check. He comes back with, I can get you two, but you have to buy the other two. And I was like, no thanks. Now, I'm not trying to be stupid, but you watch the games. There's no one there. That's what drives me nuts about the There's Red Wings. no one there. Don't tell me you can't give me four tickets. And here's the thing. I may not be the morning show guy on Indian X anymore, but I'm on WDVD. We do this podcast. I could really, I mean, we have a lot of people that listen to this podcast. I could go on and on about how great the Pistons are if you really want me to in exchange for the tickets. Like, I could be like, oh, we had the greatest time. It was so fun. The Pistons are great. Gr- uh, Blake Griffin is so fun to watch. Whatever. But, like, two tickets, like, and they're going to be nosebleeds, too. Right. Hey, and yeah. welcome. Welcome I know. to the real world. You're a pauper I know. Now. I'm back to- You're rea- a peasant. Yeah, no longer have any clout. None. Not everybody's big time me, but I have noticed that people who used to- Want to be in business with the Cal Cagno brand aren't really wanting to do business with the Cal Cagno brand anymore. Well, that's too bad. We're going to change that. Yeah, exactly. We get all the sponsors of the world. We'll have all these listeners. In yeah, we're, we're, our cars will just be all stickered up with sponsors. We'll, <laughs> we'll look like a NASCAR. Yeah, we will look like NASCAR. I want to look like um, Richard Petty. I couldn't think of any. <laughs> or tattoos. What happens if we turn our bodies into <laughs> real life NASCARs? Into moving billboards. Yeah. Or and sitting billboards. So like watch the TV. Pistons could sponsor Olympia, you know, whatever, or Pistons, whatever that is. Yeah. Could sponsor us. We get like a Pistons tattoo on our thigh. <laughs> and it, it you know, it, it's twenty grand and I'm putting it on, you know. Doesn't it seem like though with these tickets, okay, first of all, they're so expensive, and I'm not trying to be that guy, but they're so expensive to go see a game. And yeah, why? Kind of, kind of funny what the what what us peasants have had to pay these last. <laughs> yeah, I haven't bought a concert decades, ticket huh? in probably eighteen years. Yeah. I have not bought a concert ticket, so I don't even know. Yeah. Um. But I'm. Doesn't it seem like having people in the seats and buying concessions and paying for parking is better than having it be three quarters empty? Like you watch Wings games, there's no one there. There's no one, and it drives me nuts because I'm a huge Wings fan. Hockey is my my number one sport that I love, and I turn on a Red Wings game, and in the new arena. The the LCA the the chairs are bright red yeah and so you turn on the game and all you see is a sea of bright red it's not people wearing jerseys no no it's an empty seat yeah and I don't know why they don't offer like and I, again I am not a marketing genius by any means but like if it's a Tuesday night game and it's against somebody who's not very good or whatever well the Red Wings aren't very good this year are they no they're terrible. yeah but I'm saying. Offer them up at ten bucks a piece. Fill the house, well, dude. Let, Offer let, them at twenty bucks a piece. But let, let's look at it for what it is. All those seats are probably bought for season ticket holders true. and companies. So if they're not using those tickets, they're not using them. But let's be smart. Make the announcement that if you're in the upper deck, come on down. Come on down. Fill it in. Yeah, I know that uh, my brother-in-law. Had they had tickets to the Pistons the years when it was real lean, like I'm talking after they won the championships, and he said like he would go to he's a sales guy and he would go to like clients and be like, hey, I've got tickets to go to the suite to see the Pistons, and people were like, I'm good. <laughs> they didn't even want to go but for it's free. free alcohol and yeah. shrimp cocktail. Nah, I'm good because I don't even want to have to deal with it. Right, and you know that's the thing is when a team's winning, everyone wants to go, and when a team's not, no one wants to go. Although I will say, Tiger games are still fun even when they suck because it's a chance to be outside. Yeah. Yeah, there's something about walking from the, you know, through that concourse and just seeing that green grass. Yeah, that like you feel like you're 10 years old again. Exactly. But uh, you feel like Lou, Whit- sweet Lou Whitaker. <laughs> I feel like watching Trammel and Lou do a <laughs> double play. And Marty Castillo. <laughs> Remember that name? Daryl Evans. <laughs> I met Daryl Evans once. Sid Monge. There you go. Nice. I can. I can Tommy Brookins. Tommy Brookins. Uh, Kirk Gibson. Yeah. Chet Lemon. I have a Kirk. Gibson story where he was not very nice to me, so I'm not very fan, big fan of Larry Kitty. Herndon. Nice. Chet Lemon. Uh, Lance Parrish. Um, did I say Marty Castillo yet? Yeah. Did I say Matt Noakes? No. Do you know who that is? Tom Brookins. Yeah. <laughs> he had a push broom mustache that could save the world. Just ask. Yep. So what is your name? My name. Yes, your name. Come again. Radio. 
That'll do it for episode 50 of Cal Cagno Radio. Remember, if you got a dirty little secret, tell us about it. Go to calcagnoradio.com. Also, all the episodes are up there. So much for you to look at. Pictures of me. Pictures of Joe. Well, there's one of me. Yeah. You didn't use the one that I wanted you to use. I will use that. How about this? I will use that as the picture for today's podcast. Okay. You're not going to do a Valentine's Day thing? Oh, yeah. I probably should do Valentine's Day. Okay. The next one we do next week, we'll use that picture. Okay. Everybody be waiting with bated breath. Bated breath. There we go. Like a big mackerel in your mouth. Bated breath. Have a great day, everybody. See you.